Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an exponential equation with radicals. How radical it can get, right? So we have square root of 5 plus 2 to the power x equals square root of 5 minus 2 to the power 11. So we're going to be solving for x values, and I'll be presenting two methods. Now, first of all, let's observe that we have radicals on both sides, and they're different. So how can you raise a radical to a power? It's going to become the power of another radical, right? That's the critical part for this problem. But those radicals are related. They're not totally random, and that's the idea we're going to use. So how are they related? They are conjugates. So whenever you have two radicals like square root of a plus square root of b, and the square root of a minus square root of b, they're called conjugates. Because when you multiply them, they give you from difference of two squares, a minus b. So that's what we're going to do with these radicals, and that's pretty much the basis for both methods. So let's go ahead and multiply them together. Square root of 5 plus 2. You could also write it as the square root of 4. That's the same thing, but uh, I'd rather use an integer. And then multiply it by the square root of 5 minus 2. And their product from difference of two squares is going to be 5 minus 4, which is 1. Now this is nice. It's important to get 1. Not only are they conjugates, but they're also reciprocals. You get that? Like 5 and 1 fifth. Or 2 over 3 and 3 over 2. Great. Now we can use that fact to our advantage, right? So let's go ahead, and this is going to be our first method basically. Let's go ahead and write one of these in terms of the other. And which one should we use? No big deal. I'm probably going to change this one. So let's go ahead and isolate root 5 minus 2 here. And we can write it as 1 over root 5 plus 2. Makes sense? I'm dividing both sides by this. Obviously, this is equal to 1. So divide by that. That's what you get. Okay? So far, so good? Okay. Now, let's go ahead and let me rewrite the expression, the original equation. We have this equals that. And now, let's go ahead and replace square root of 5 plus 2 with this reciprocal. Okay? So it's going to look like this. Square root of 5 plus 2 is going to stay the same to the power x. I didn't want to change it because it has the variable, so leave it alone. And then on the right-hand side, this is going to be replaced with 1 over square root of 5 plus 2 from here, and then raise it to the power 11. Great. So far, so good. We're getting closer to the answer. Now, notice that 1 over something is the reciprocal, right? So we can use a negative exponent to express that. How? 1 over root 5 plus 2, or in general, 1 over a, is a to the power negative 1. So we can replace 1 over root 5 plus 2 with root 5 plus 2 to the power negative 1. That's the same thing, right? And then, of course, we need to raise it to another power, which is the 11th power. And now this is where things get pretty interesting and nice. Now, we have two exponents, so we're going to multiply them. Root 5 plus 2 to the power x and root 5 plus 2 to the power negative 1 times 11 is negative 11. Like I said earlier, this is where things get nicer because now you have the same base. And we kind of owe it to the fact that these two are reciprocals. Make sense? Great. So now like tangent and cotangent, right? Pretty much the same idea. So now basically from here what follows is that x equals negative 11. Here's a million dollar question for you. Is that the only solution? Can we find other solutions? Because a lot of times with these things, we can kind of, you know, tweak things a little bit and get another solution, but we'll see what happens, okay? So let's go ahead and talk about the second method, and then we'll see what that gives us, and then hopefully we can get another solution maybe, right? Okay, let's see. Obviously, there's more than, I think, one way to do it, or at least two, more than two ways to do it. I just thought of something. Maybe before I, can, I get into the second method, I can quickly talk about it, if you allow me to do it <laughs> really quick. So you could basically start with this, right? I mean, this is something that you can expand. Using the binomial theorem, 
this expression is actually going to have uh, a lot of terms. There's going to be 12 terms. So this is kind of problematic because you're going to start with this, right? And then you're going to have 11 choose 1, root 5 to the power 10, and then you're going to introduce the 2, and so on and so forth. There's going to be a lot of terms. And then when you set it equal to this, how are you going to conclude about the value of x? That's going to be very problematic because you have like a really long expression equal to a power of this. But rather, maybe since this is exponential and the variable is in the exponent, in other words, we can go ahead and maybe use logarithms, can we? Let's go ahead and give it a try. Let's go ahead and since the base doesn't matter here, let's use natural log here, ln. And then now we can go ahead and bring this to the front. x times ln root 5 plus 2 equals ln root 5 plus min minus 2 to the 11th. But we can go ahead and bring the 11 to the front as well. It's going to be 11 times ln root 5 minus 2. So from here, x should be directly equal to 11 times ln root 5 minus 2 divided by ln root 5 plus 2. So here's the critical part. You need to be able to simplify this. Otherwise, if you leave it like this, this is not in the simplest form. As you notice, we got a really nice, simple answer, right? But how do you simplify it? You kind of have to find a common power, or one of these has to be a power of the other one, which again brings us to the fact that these two are reciprocals, therefore one of them can be, can be expressed as the other to the power of negative 1. Make sense? And then that's where you get the negative 1 and so on and so forth. Not very interesting, but just another idea using logs, you can arrive at the same thing. Okay? A little differently. So now let's go ahead and take a look at the second method real quick, because I think the second method, uh, you'll like it, uh, but I don't know which one you're going to like better, so you're going to let me know. Please let us know in the comment section down below which method you like better and why. Okay, great. Thank you. Now, what do you do? Since these two are conjugates, I'm thinking about the fact that they're conjugates, not necessarily reciprocals, because uh, pretend I didn't check that. And I want to kind of use that fact. And what I can do is maybe multiply both sides by root 5 plus 2, because I already have this on the left-hand side. What would happen if I multiplied by both sides by another power of root 5 plus 2. And in this case, it would make sense if you multiply both sides by root 5 plus 2, not just to the first power, but to the 11th power. And you know why? Because we already have a radical to the 11th power, and we're talking about the co them being conjugates. So it's important to use the same power so that we can simplify it. Otherwise, think about it. If you take root 5 minus 2 to the 11th and multiply it by root 5 plus 2 itself or even to the 10th power, this is not going to simplify as much as possible. It is going to simplify somehow, but it's not going to be the best, right? So the best version is when you multiply by root 5 plus 2 to the 11th power so that they can be uh, collected under the same exponent. So now, what do we have on the left-hand side? You're supposed to add the exponents. We have the same base, which is good. At x plus 11, and these two are going to be root 5 minus 2 plus times root 5 plus 2. That's going to give you 5 minus 4 again, but to the 11th power. But that doesn't matter because 5 minus 4 is equal to 1. You can raise it to the millionth power. It won't change, right? Okay, and I know in a recent video on my other channel, A plus B, I, by the way, I have another channel in case you didn't know that, go ahead and check it out. But on that channel, we've done a video which kind of takes one and just takes it to another level. And I know it's been very controversial and I knew it would be very controversial. Anyways, this gives us one, good, to keep a long story short, when is something to another power equals one, when the base is one or negative one, and then the exponent has to be accordingly, but we don't have that because this is a constant base, so the exponent has to be zero. That's the only possibility. So x plus 11 needs to be zero, which means x equals negative 11, as before, right? Same idea uh, approached a little differently. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and... Bye-bye.